Before I start reviewing the JBL 305Ps, I want to say LSR so bad, but they're not the LSR 305 Mark IIs, they're the 305Ps. Before I start reviewing them, because everyone needs to know how to do this, when you have a desk, and I have the stands that are three feet high, and they're, they're doing their perfect, I mean, equilateral triangle is probably like here. The way you position them, and this is, like, no one does this, and you need to do this. If you're using, like, FUBAR, you can just set a DSP to set it to mono, which I have a hotkey to set that DSP. You set it to mono, you play whatever, whatever music you like, usually vocals are the best. It guarantees when you're in mono that it's going to come from the center. Except when it's not, when it's there. If you if you play music in mono and it's biased to the left, if you're sitting where you know you're in the center of the two speakers and they're equidistant, at least you think they're equidistant, you play music. And I hear it coming from there. So what does that mean? That's the center. I hear it, it's in mono. I hear it coming from there. That means I need to shift that over. Two ways to do that. Make that one more powerful by bringing it closer or push that one further away. And I'm gonna go with push this one further away. So you can just, and I'm talking about like, perfect. How much did I move that? 3 sixteenths of an inch? That's, when you're talking about really setting up a desk, like absolute perfection, you gotta be able to set your source to mono and then you gotta just do timing adjustments. Don't adjust gains and just, Get everything gain the same and just go uh, uh, until it shifts over. Then once you have a perfect center image through like five or six songs, because different frequencies will come out of different drivers and then you'll have to just, just make it so that it's like, okay, and you know where the center is. You're not, you could just judge that. And then once you found it, then you can switch it out of mono and then you can enjoy your speakers until two weeks from now when you have to run that test again because you don't know if your brain messed up. So anyway, Highly anticipated review, that's why I gave a little bit of advice to start. Let's talk. Because I, previous review that I finished in this desk uh, last week was Audio Engine HD6s. A $750 pair of speakers that, well, I gave a very long review about not liking. And so I hadn't given these desk time up until then. I, I'd put them up in my living room, I'm like, ah, oh, they sound like 305s, I guess. So I took the HD6s off, the $750 pair of HD6s, and I put the 305Ps on, which I think I paid uh, under 400 for. It's like, it, they're brand new models, so they're a little bit higher than the old, there's the old uh, LSR 305s. We'll talk about the, the shiny, we'll talk about the shiny, we'll get to the shiny, but let's talk about what happens when I put them on this desk for half the cost, and then hit play, and then just, It was still on mono. It's like, why? See, I haven't had my LSRs hooked up in the capacity of like, oh, I want to listen to my LSRs in a while. Because they have a very unique trait of powered monitors where they don't get hot. And these have been running for days. I haven't shut these off at all. They don't they just stay on. Little white power indicator bar here. Come back here and there's no heat. It's like nothing, it's like it's off. And because of that, I use them in a capacity of for my voice chat. Discord and Ventrilo come through an LSR 305 in here, and it's an LSR 305, excuse the shipping, hidden behind this panel. And so there's just cold speakers that at any point people might be talking out of them. And they're 305s, so voice clarity is top notch. Now, the question becomes, did they fuck these up? Half yes, and half holy god no. So here, here's what's happening. The half yes, half yes they fucked it up is, what is that, JBL? I mean, I'm looking over there and I see four exposed screws around the driver, and I see the, the, the uh, and so there's no exposed tr screws anymore, because that's important to me but they replaced the entire fascia of the speaker with this shiny, fucking, shiny, fucking black plastic. 
And there is nothing I hate more in this world. No, I'm, I, no, there's nothing I hate more. I was thinking like, was it blue LEDs? Blue LEDs are pretty bad. But uh, shiny black plastic, it, there's no reason for it. No one took a cu customer survey ever that I know of and went, you know what all TV bezels and keyboards and mice and laptops needs to be? You know, a, a type of plastic that when you put your thumb on it, it immediately gives you a, a permanent thumbprint. Permanent. And what I mean by permanent is, I've, I, I did this when I unboxed these. I unbox these on camera because I have unboxings on my uh, other channel, my original channel, my old channel, which I unbox everything. And I, oh, I said, oh my God, this is gonna suck. Look at this thumbprint. I took a paper towel, a clean paper towel, was sitting, and I, I went to clean it off. It's like, it's not coming off. And it wasn't that it wasn't coming off. It was that I was physically scratching the plas the shiny shit plastic. Where is it? Somewhere over here is literally damaged. It's damaged. I damaged this fucking shiny plastic with a paper towel. So points off, JBL. All right. Could you imagine if the if the goddamn Studio 530s came back out, but they were just shiny plastic? I couldn't recommend them. I couldn't recommend them. They looked like a Samsung piece of shit garbage. So bad, bad JBL, bad. I do like the fact that they take took the uh, the little JBL logos here now instead of the bottom. I like the little thin. It's almost blue. I, I want to call it white, but that LED light indicator there is is just the slightest tone of like a bluish. Still better than blue though. It's not blue. It's just blueish. I could live with that. I'm gonna leave that thumbprint on there so you could see it for the rest of time. Oh, by the way, these will be in a yard sale. Not because they're not fucking fantastic, which I'm getting to, but because I already have my set and I've got other things coming and well, that's how the yard sales work. What, were the, what was the problem with the LSR 305s? What was the problem? Why change? I don't know. The, the, I've looked at the specs and I, the power is comparable and the price is comparable. They haven't like, this isn't like the 305P Mark II where it's twice the price because it has digital amplifiers. The connectivity options on the back, which now that I've got it perfectly set on this, I'm about to ruin, are identical to the original 305's port. Same. I mean, I haven't fisted that port in a while, but I could um go up, actually. But um, balanced input, quarter-inch input. Here's your input sensitivity, which I have set to plus four versus negative 10, it came default on negative 10, which is actually louder, but I'm using my Emotiva XDA2 as my source, so balanced into the Emotiva Control Freak, which you can't buy, sorry guys, which is running XLR, and the XLR has come to here, and I was it was just way too sensitive, so I turned it down, and now I have to crank it all the way up, and then it's sort of like at the right volume. We also get a high frequency trim, negative two, which it's on currently. I would point out that in this configuration, I have a trimmed negative two decibels off the high frequencies. But the uh, the boundary EQ, which is basically low end, is you have zero, negative 1.5, or negative three. And I have the bass all the way up. We'll get to how they sound. We'll get to how they sound. Here's your volume control, which is a clicky, I guess uh, it's gotta be an analog knob, but it's, it's clicky, so you could actually go, Boom, that's six, that's six and a half, that's seven, that's seven and a half. You can accurately pick the volume. You're not just sort of like getting it sort of there. It goes click in a spot. Here's your on off, which has a full words of on and off. And I don't know of any other switch that has the actual full words written on them. Most of them are just a zero and the, and the one, and that's how you understand. And here's your power, and that's it. There, there's not much going on back here. If your shit's too loud, you set it to negative to, to plus four. If your shit's too quiet, you set it to negative ten, which is the default. And I put this right back, like perfectly. There's no, there's no way on earth. It's okay, whatever. We're close. Now, because these are powered monitors, the back of that speaker is identical to the back of this speaker. Some people don't grasp that. Studio monitors are sold individually, usually one at a time. I don't know why, actually. I, I mean, most people are going to get a pair. But I guess if you were doing like a surround sound mix, you'd need a third. Or if one breaks, you could throw it away by one. It's nice. You just know that when they're sold, they're usually sold per. So check the listing in the description if it's I found one that has a pair or if I found one that has individual. 
why did they, let's go back to the question. So why did they um why did they update these? What was wrong with those? What was wrong with those? There have been complaints for the LSR 305. Um hissing when they were silent. Because I leave them on, like I said, all day, and everyone who's gonna get them is basically gonna leave them just on all day. And the thing about powered monitors is some of them are quieter than others when they're just sitting here. Now let's listen. You definitely hear that, right? It's there. There is a shh, and that's just. Oh, let me see if it goes away. Hold on. Yeah, as soon as you, taking the volume from full ten down to 0. 0.5, that is a consistent buzz till you go to zero, and then it's off. So it's. It's not as much an amplifier a ring, like, oh, it's just waiting to go, as it is just noisy amplification. And that's really the only limitation of these. Can I, I'll get to how they sound, goddammit. Because guess what? They shit all over most things in this price range and double. I'll get to your Mackies. I'll get to the Mackie 624s, because there's, there's different benefits to the... Those are the 624s, if I would have had the 524s, or I got the six inch version or the seven inch version of this, it would have been a more fair fight. And I might still buy it, depending on how well I just can give these away on the yard sale. Then I could just buy the next one and just then do a real comparison between it. Why did you, why JBL, why did you update it? Because the complaint was, those are noisy when you, so these are, and I didn't notice it till I was sitting here doing work and it was just nighttime and there was nothing running and I didn't have headphones on, I'm just sitting here I'm like, is my computer really loud? And it was just this, right here, foot and a half away from my head, and I could just, just make it out. And it's not power wine, because I have a power conditioner down there, and I've, this is a known thing with the JBLs. Let me get rid of that smudge. Oh, I've made the smudge worse. What they've changed, and this was a mod, I know No Audiophile talked about it being one of the things, he had the LSR 308s in his living room for a while, and he loved them. One of the mods you, they used to do is, if I if I tap on the front of this, and you're gonna have to excuse me if I fuck this up bad. You hear that? So that waveguide is just plastic. The mod was, you pull the thing apart, and you cover the back in like super glue or, or, or hot glue or something to dampen the plastic, to make it not a thin piece of plastic, but solid. So listen, that's what they changed they've actually dampened the whole fascia. So that's a good, that's an improvement that people have proven on the old set was required. I mean, not required, required. Everyone loved them without that, but if you wanted that little bit more performance, you basically disassembled your whole fucking speaker and started squeezing hot, you, hot, you found a hot glue thread on 4chan, and then you got it completely confused because why isn't everyone just filling their speakers with hot glue? That's what people were doing, and that's what these are doing by default. So you got a fully dampened fascia now. Um, the waveguide is a little bit better around the driver as well, because again, do, that has a plate with screws, and then it's a separate piece. This is one continuous roll. Okay. Power is comparable, connections are comparable, price is comparable. How the fuck do they sound? Oh. How was I supposed to know? I would be the one who couldn't let go. This is from the Spaceballs soundtrack, by the way. What is this? Kim Carnes and Jeffrey Osborne, my heart has a mind of its own. Yeah, whatever. Point is, I took $750 audio engines that were beautiful and cherry and remote control. I took them off of here. I put on the standard choice for everyone, and it's the fucking gold standard always. I, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. It's been so long. I've got the swans, which are still better. I'm just going to point out that I still think the swans have different detail that's going on. But, but... But Swan, you wait. These, fucking these, that waveguide at the right height, at the perfect spot, with the balance adjusted distance, and you put on something good, you get this, you get that wash. If I do this in a fucking speaker review, they're probably gonna sell out. 
Of course, when I do this, it means what? The sounds don't come from a speaker and a speaker, and then you hit. It's just this fucking wash of soundstage in front of you. They're slightly bass light. They're slightly bass light. JBL sells a matching subwoofer. I actually have the matching Mackie subwoofer down there that I was gonna hook up for this review, but I'm like, you know what? Just tell people they need a subwoofer. It's way easier. On your desk, right here, you will shit your pants amazement at how these sound. And I broke them in for probably 15 hours in the living room before I bring them here and did another three days. So they're, they're, they're good and broken in. I do think some speakers need it and some speakers don't. These speakers probably need it. And I don't know if more time will give them more low end. Probably not. These are pretty soft surrounds. Stiff surrounds and things need to be like, oh, they need to relax. But this is a soft surround. And you could just sit here and oh! oh it did a thing it did a what what song is this the best of soundtrack this is Tul tulio you shitting me tulio zaloga tay lavery good luck with that one just good luck with that one i'm not even spelling it but that just did a thing where it went and it was every fucking inch in front of me. These are the DR Pro stands, by the way. Look for three foot stands. Get a four foot plastic table. I'm telling you what to do now. This is how your, everyone's desk should be this. A four foot plastic table covered in yoga mats for reflections and so you could drop expensive shit on it and it doesn't get hurt and it's black and everyone's email, or you can get it in a different color. You got a four foot plastic table, you got three foot speaker stands, you put them to the left and right, you stay away from that fucking back wall, you put it in the middle of your room, you put your computer monitor right here, or vertical there with Megumin on it, and you, this is this, this is how near field should be, and no other way. I'm, I'm putting my foot down internet, like that set up there with it against the wall and there's like the ports going that way and there's more wall and there's like an open space here this is not the best scenario it's what I got it I have to review here I gotta occasionally game here and then you know porn here but <coughs> please take the steps get the yoga blocks build something get this to happen because you need to hear what these can do. Oh, it's Beatles. Fuck that. No. Fuck you. Frozen OST. Didn't really like Frozen. Anybody in the comments want to tell me why Frozen was so popular? It wasn't even that good a story. Was it just because it was a stupid retarded snowman? It was a retarded snowman. He was literally mentally handicapped snowman was in the fucking movie. And everyone's going nuts. So I downloaded the soundtrack when everyone's going nuts. I got the Japanese version, so I actually I have them singing in English and Japanese. And I'm like, these songs aren't even that catchy. Like, where's the Aladdin spirit, Disney? Come on. Pearl Jam. It's actually, and this is this is me now, this is me being Z. Z, what are you talking about? The projection of the vocals is coming a little high. Like I'm hearing, like I am, my ears are here. This is where my ears are. I'm, I'm actually a little bit higher than the stands. I should lower the chair. Okay, now I'm eye level with the sweeters. And I still hear the vocals are coming from like up. And in my living room, I don't mind a little up, but on my desk, I kind of don't want up. So you know what that means? Here's, here's, here's what that means. Here's what that means. Oh, God, everyone's unsubscribing from me. Why? Why would you do this, Sios? Why? Why on earth would you ruin what was a perfectly good review? It looked like a sane review. You cursed a bit. People love to yell at me about my cursing, by the way. Okay. Now we sit. We switch back to mono. We place them. And uh, usually... Usually I'll eyeball, I'll get, I'll get, I know where the middle is, I can feel the middle. This is more of a speaker placement video than a review of these speakers. These speakers are insane and they are the standard and they will remain that 
until something very amazing comes along. Like we'll talk about the Mac. We'll talk about the Mackies while I'm eyeballing this because I've just looked at like eyeball. So we having more sides, less sides. I don't know. There's mono. Bias left. Okay. The Mackies, their biggest piece, their their thing that made me go like fucking Mackies over LSRs was at Quiet Volumes, the Mackies still sounded amazing. And at Quiet Volumes here, I've lost these. Th th there it is. Zeos, which one should I buy, the Mackies or the JBLs? Here's what you need to decide. The Mackies perform perfectly at like a fucking whisper. And these are sort of like, I mean, they're not bad, but I'm not no. I wouldn't say that about these. They're just, they're quiet speakers. You need to get these up. By the way, this is um, uh, Do the Evolution from Pearl Jam's Yield album. By the way, now the voice. I'm gonna get something with this voice. Oh my god! Whoever doesn't have this in flack in their playlist, get the fuck off my channel. I mean, don't. But f download it somehow, because God knows where the hell you're going to find it, and then you can stay on my channel. Right. Yeah, now, because I did the upside down thing, I know you people are like, what, the, what an idiot he is. Fucking try it, assholes, alright? Because now I'm my level with the top of this driver, and I hear test your mic coming from right here. And I don't know what it is. But even when my ear level is perfect with the tweeter, it's always higher. So I gotta do this. Suck my ass. Suck my ass. All right, internet? This is a fucking 40,000 view review, at least, after a week or two. Suck my ass. It's right there. I saw a baby drive a truck. I saw a junkie eat a tube up. It's perfectly centered. This is, I don't understand, I, look. I don't question the science of things. I play with the science of things. Someone tells me you should leave your speakers up. I'm like, that's great. But what happens when I do this? I'll turn them anyway. What happens when I plug this into my toaster? Oh, it catches fire. I want to know that from physical experimentation. It's fun. It's turned upside down. It doesn't cost you anything. And the JBL logo is upside down. And people are like, why are your speakers upside down? Fucking try it. Do, do the thing with the, with the mono to adjust it, and then if, you, if you're listening to it and your speaker heights are, are perfect, you think, and you're still hearing vocals coming from up, push the tweeters down. And people are gonna be like, well, the phase alignment's gonna be all wrong. I don't care. I'm not mixing music. If that has nothing to do with mixing music and phase alignment's the problem, then they need to be tilted. That's another pro thing about the swans. Well, what do the swans have going then, Zeos? Why should I look at the swans? Because the swans have fidelity over these. These do, Soundstage and imaging fucking retarded. But I still call the swans as better fidelity. Like if you just, if you want this depth, swans. If you want this, which holy shit, games and just amazing live performances, these. And if you want a mixture of what I've got here and absolutely precise, quiet, ooh, whatever the DSP, Mackies, okay? Does anyone have to ask that question in the comments now? Probably, because you only watched three minutes of the video. Anyway, that's Weird Al, by the way, my own eyes. And that's Wizard of Oz, which is like a vinyl rip from a mono vinyl. I love JBL. I need a JBL tattoo. Where should I get it? If I hit a million subscribers, you guys can tell me where a JBL tattoo goes on my body. Even the stupid one with a little triangle and a circle. I'll, I'll do it. So it'll be a small one, but it'll, mm, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> million subscribers, I'm about to hit 100,000. So, should you buy the, if you have 305s, should you buy the new ones? Not really. 
there is definitely, I'm telling you because I don't remember being this excited when I hooked up the 305s and I didn't want to yank them out from their positions because I'm like, oh, it's just going to be the same thing. But you can't buy those anymore, so it doesn't fucking matter. You can buy these. These are like top list. Everyone needs it. Let me actually go into explaining something else. Okay. So they need, if you, don't, if you throw on a Dead Mouse song. Uh, City in Florida. No. They're, they're moving. Here. I, I, I learned this experiment from, from all the testing I've done. Here, right here. They sound, they, they, there's enough bass. There's enough bass. But. Actually, there's more bass here now. Holy shit, there's so much bass. All right, maybe I'm lying. Maybe I'm just, I'm lost my mind. Because I've been playing with them, and there's been a couple tracks where it's like, you know, they really could use a subwoofer. But not a city in Florida by Dead Mouse. So, the way subwoofers work, <clears throat> do you need one when you buy the speakers? No. You can always add a subwoofer later. You can always do it later. So, if you get speakers, try the speakers on their own. Try the Mothouse Cubes on their own. Try those Swans on their own. Try everything on its own. And then decide after a couple days, couple weeks, do I want do I want more in the in the in the in the in the in the department? And then you can go out and buy one. Now, let me do a quick roundup for people who have absolutely no idea how to hook up powered monitors to their computer. If you're very new to this and you just found this channel, you have no idea who I am or why there's anime girls on a vertical 21 by 9 NEC monitor. Hi. The problem with powered monitors and just a computer is you need a way to control the volume because there's volume controls on each speaker. There. And there's one over there. So um, it doesn't make sense. You're like, oh, it's, music's too loud. I'm going to lower my speakers. No. So you have some choices. These speakers take a quarter inch input in the back, which you can buy, and I'll link in the description, Future Zeos. Well, so I haven't hooked up XLR. You don't need to know what that is. If you're, if you're a novice, you don't need to, don't need to worry about it. This is not, you can get these to work on anything. Your old iPhone could play on these with the right wire. I will list in the description a shit ton of wires you could use to hook this speaker up. Three and a half millimeter to XLR, which you would just pull the XLRs apart and plug one in here and one in there and you'd have a split and then you'd plug three and a half millimeters in to your laptop sound card and you'd be golden. It would just work. The only issue is at that point, if you plug it into your onboard sound, your laptop sound, then your laptop's master volume is controlling the volume. And that's all that's controlling the volume. And um, if you put these up to maximum and you have that and you set that to like 50%, you ever have your computer just decide that it wants to be 100% volume? I have, just randomly. I'll like, be, be, everything will be nice and calm then I'll load a game or something. And it's like, oh, we're gonna set your volume to 100 now. <gasps> Fuck! And then your shit explodes. And you know there's no, like, once you're on, like, onboard, it's like, where's my keyboard command to lower this? And you can't, and you gotta like, smack the speakers off the stands. So what I recommend is a volume control in a form of a passive preamp. Or, it says passive preamp. It's not really an amp, but what it is is a volume knob. So, for example, you'd get a 3.5 millimeter RCA, plug it in here, then you get RCA to quarter inch, and plug them into each speaker, and then you'd have a physical volume knob that just is passing through. What this is doing is literally the wires come out of that, which is full volume all the time. It comes into a set of plugs that are hidden somewhere on the floor, and this is just a volume knob that controls it, which is fucking amazing, and they don't sell it anymore. And if someone who's making headphone cables out there could solder like a potentiometer and get like a piece of metal, they'd make a fortune. Because this thing was like 60 or 70 bucks which is way too much money. This thing, the, the shit sis, is like 60 or 70 bucks. I've actually got several of these. I may as well just get into it since I'm talking. Oh, then I gotta talk about this. Oh, God. All right, the review of the speakers is over. They're fucking amazing. They'll blow your goddamn mind with the sound stage and, and imaging and clarity still give, oh yeah, okay. So you look at this knob sound, which you need to drink pur purple marker, specifically purple to draw an uh, indicator. But look at that. You could run RCA ins and have it XLR out, and then you could you could matrix switch them. So this thing is a goddamn. I really need to talk about it more because it's super awesome for the cost. It was like nothing. 
I've got this JDS Labs one, which is very similar, where you have switchable ins and outs, and then it's three and a half millimeter in RCA, so you could do that to control them. These are all passively to control the volume. However, however, again, if you're a novice, if you have no idea what's going on, but but Zios, what do I need to make it go? You want to make it go the best you can make it go for cheap. You spend hundred and ten dollars on one of these. Well, not this one specifically, because this is the older model, but there's a new one. It's an Origin G2. It's an amp deck. USB plug into computer or fiber optic from the computer into it. Those are your two choices. And it literally becomes your sound card. And the best part about having the Origin, well, on the new one you can see it, is you got to flip a switch. Either you're doing headphone out or you're doing line out or you're doing headphone out. So you get one of these, you plug it into your computer, either through fiber optic or USB, you get a three and a half millim, you go into the description, you get the three and a half millimeter to XLR cable, because I, for someone told me that that's the one you want, you don't want the one that goes a quarter inch, whatever, either one will work, but I'm telling you to get the one for XLR because the back of this has a line out or a pre out, an adjustable pre out, adjustable pre out. So you turn this thing on, it set the headphones, it powers your headphones, whatever you got. I got uh, KG, K7-12s, M1060s, whatever. And then, okay, uh, you, your speakers are on and running, and whatever volume they're set to on the back, you go, I want to listen to speakers now. You, you don't unplug anything. You just go, you lower it, you go, speakers. And now you're controlling the volume of your speakers through a good, better than your on... I guarantee the G2 is better than any onboard sound card in a laptop. And most onboard sound cards in a fucking computer, in a, in a motherboard, gaming or not, or whatever they claim. So that's $110. These are under $300, or these are under $400. That setup, that is as simple as you can get for a, I'm fucking done. I'm computer, Origin G2, speakers, headphones into Origin D2, happiness. Just pure happiness comes now. This is a good, a good, I wish they, mm. this was a little harder to turn to. It needs to be like, mm, like butter. I literally cannot believe what these do. And that just, I've never also experienced that. I just waved my hand like that. And usually you'll just, you'll, you'll, you'll maybe block some of the sound. I literally hear the sound disappearing from just my fingers going between there and my ear. That is so weird. This is Aeron, A-Y-R-E-O-N, Singularity, Prologue, The Blackboard, obviously, fuck. This visionary thinker. Same song. Will we ever? So here, guitar is coming down from here. So the, the, the very, very highs are coming from here. And the, the vocals, which I believe are more locatable through the woofer, are now in the perfect spot. So you're taking the trebly bits and you're bringing them down and you're bringing the vocal bits up. Just do, look, do what I say. If you don't like it, come complain in the comments. It's the best part about YouTube. Everyone can complain in the comments. And if I'm completely fucking wrong, 700 upvotes in the worst other, this guy sucks. Turning what's that didn't help any of my problems. Again, it's been too long. Sound demo. All right, I have to end this. We talked about preamps. We talked about Origin DAC amps. Which is, it's a DAC headphone amp that won't power other speakers. It just feeds signal and controls the volume. Link to these in the description. Link to uh, all the preamps in the description. Link to the Origin G2 in the description. Link to wires you could use to hook these up. There's a couple different ways. I'll even link to little adapters in case you have RCAs, but you need to have individual ones because they're plugged in far apart. Like if you have just a pair that's like connected, then you, you can't do it. Link to the Megamine wallpaper because every one of the ZRUs gets a beautiful vertical wallpaper, which no one can use because no one's running a 21 by nine vertical wallpaper, except for me, so I torture everybody. Link to the sound demo. This is not the only part of this review. These reviews are cut in half. One review is me bullshitting while some music plays for like... Orbital Speed Freak. Um, well, I do that, but there's a whole 12, 15 minute long 
good binaural Rode microphones to let, try to capture what these things are doing. And the Patreon, which bought these because I don't, I can't wait for every company to send me something. A couple companies have actually contacted me like, hey, you want to send you something? That's great. But, uh, oh, these came out? A buy. That buy money, that's you guys. And when I'm done with them, I'm, I'm sad that I'm going to be done with them, but I have a, a slight speaker collection problem that my doctors are like helping me with. So when I'm done with the review, when I'm done with the sound demo, these things go up for sale to anyone who's in the $5 or more uh, patronage fucking range, and you get to buy them for whatever the highest bid is. If the highest bid is 100 bucks, I pay shipping, which I means I'll lose money, but um, who cares? Just get them the hell out of my house and give me something back. That's how this works. So you also get to see these reviews way early. So if they're not in stock when this is live, the patrons all bought them. Those bastards. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you. I mean, just... just it, it's not even a question of like... How do I get a hold of you? You just contact the mayor's office. He has a special signal that shines in the sky. It's in the shape of a giant cock. I've never heard her say giant cock as clearly as just now. Just, well, clearly would be that, but as like positional, like it sounded like a human head was here saying it. They did nothing wrong. They've changed only good things. If the little hissy static, just, the, it's, it's there, it's there. If the little hissy static bothers you and it bothers some people way more than it bothers me, then all you gotta do is get a power strip, plug two, because you got two power plugs. You gotta have two power, you got a power strip, you go click, shut off at night. The remote control one, talk to uh, her, the uh, this bitch. Alexa, turn off my JBL LSR 305s. She can't figure it out, because I don't have them set up that way. But that's the answer. So links to everything and, and just, I am now going, I'm gonna sell these, and I'm gonna take that Patreon money again, and I'm gonna buy the sixes. And we're going to see what those do. Because the sixes don't exist in that line. It was the 05s and the 08s. So now there's a middle ground. Just bigger. Just bigger. And that base issue, which I didn't think I was having, but then I'm having it. Ooh, shit. 